Welcome back to 3 Plus U. September is here. We're thinking the changing of the colors, pumpkin spice, mums, and sepsis. Yeah, September. It's Sepsis Awareness Month. Who knew to tell us why and what the heck sepsis is and why we need to have a month dedicated to it. Let's bring in our good friend, Dr. Matt Codsey. He's the vice president with uh, Medical Affairs CHI Memorial. Dr. Codsey, uh, we love having you on because you explain things so clearly and you can put the cookies on the bottom shelf for us. So sepsis, September Sepsis Awareness Month. First of all, what the heck is sepsis? I've heard it in terms of infection, inside, infection inside the body, but I, I don't know what it is. Uh, break it down for me. The sepsis is your body's reaction to an infection, and when that reaction is severe, then people get incredibly sick, and, and that's sepsis, which means that any infection can cause sepsis. And, and I think a lot of people typically think of it. Uh, I, I always hear the term, yeah, the appendix ruptured and it became septic or whatever. Is that? It is, is that, and, I, and I think of things like septic tank. Uh, so is that, what, what are some of the, like if you have an infection inside of your body, uh, it develops sepsis or you, or you become septic, and then what happens? What are some of the outlying um, uh, results of that? Sure, so there's one thing I wanna point out when you ask that, it's sort of a lead in. The, the mnemonic, the thing we think of for sepsis is time. So T for temperature, they're gonna have a fever, of course they're infected. I for infection, some sort of infection is causing this. M for mental decline. So these people are sick enough that they're confused or they're sleepy. They're just not themselves. And E for extremely ill. They look very sick. We see things like a significant drop in blood pressure. So we have to put patients on medications to keep their blood pressure up, to get the blood flow to their organs. And if we don't do that, sometimes they can get damage to organs like liver or kidneys. So, whereas an infection often affects one area, unless it's a general blood infection, the effects of that infection that cause sepsis can cause damage throughout the body. So let's even back it up one step further. How would somebody get an infection that would cause sepsis? Is it as easy as the rusty nail on the outer part of the skin or is it more internal? Oh, it, it can be anything. Any infection, if it develops to a certain point, can cause sepsis. So a pneumonia can cause sepsis. I talked earlier uh, when I was discussing this this morning about people who are more likely to get infections. So diabetics with poor control. You talked about the rusty nail. We tell those patients to always check their feet because they can't feel them very well and they can get a cut if they don't notice. That cut can get infected and if that progresses, that can cause sepsis. So, so, so oh, go ahead. Well, so, so if somebody um, it does get some type of an outward wound and they get sepsis, that's not, will that be reflected in the wound itself? Or might you not even see that particular infection? Because there's, are there some topical infections and then more that go internal that become septic? So it's a fair question. And the answer is yes and. So you can have a small infection that itself might not progress to something just ugly looking. And the bacteria from that infection can get into the bloodstream and cause sepsis. If that's not the case, then we would expect the infection itself, be it in the foot or the skin somewhere, to be pretty evident if it's going to cause sepsis. So again, it's a yes and. I think the concept is to really be very attentive to areas that could be infected. And so, uh, and, and we talk about the symptoms of sepsis. You mentioned temperature, uh, signs of an infection, mental decline, and just being extremely ill. What are, what are some of the things, I mean, because I, I think when I'm extremely ill, honestly, the last thing I think is I um, probably have sepsis and I need to go to the hospital. What is that, what is that one thing that, that when you see somebody that has sepsis that separates them from any other illness that they may be having? So honestly, that, a lot of that requires an evaluation in the emergency room, let's say, because a lot of the things we look at that define sepsis are things like their blood pressure, their heart rate, their breathing, their temperature, their laboratory, their blood tests, like their white blood cell count that fights infection will go way up. So I think the lesson here really is not, gosh, do I have sepsis? Is it time to go get checked? It's, oh, I have an infection. I'm early on. I need to get that treated because if I don't get this infection, it could develop into sepsis. And, and if somebody does develop sepsis, you're mentioning things like 
uh, blood pressure, uh, organs possibly shutting down. This is something that needs to be treated quickly. Uh, long range, I'm assuming a death could result. Is that it, in every case if it's left untreated or are some cases more minor than others? And, and can some cases just kind of heal themselves? I mean, absolutely sepsis has to be treated and that's gonna be with antibiotics to treat the infection plus medicines to support things like the blood pressure. And in fact, if you look at the death rate of the mortality from sepsis, for every hour that diagnosis is delayed or not made, there's an 8% increase in the death rate, in the mortality. Okay, doctor, thank you so much. Now, this is fascinating. And uh, uh, one last question, I think we're just about out of time, but uh, how do you, pre is there a way to prevent it? I mean, if, if obviously if something happens to you, uh, other than being careful, are there things that you can do to make your immune system uh, maybe a little stronger so that sepsis won't become an issue? So that's a bit of a broad question. I'm going to focus again on the diabetics. So, for example, people with diabetes, they're more likely to get a bad infection if the diabetes is not controlled. People with other illnesses, if those diseases are not controlled, they're more likely to get infections. So controlling illnesses like diabetes, for example, will help protect people from getting infections in the first place and then sepsis and then the all important point like i said if someone notices that they have an infection get it treated if it's small keep an eye on it if it looks like something you need to see your doctor about get it treated I love it. Dr. Kotze, thank you so much again. Uh, and I didn't get you anything for Sepsis Awareness Month, but it is, I have all month. I have still have a few weeks left to do that. So Dr. Kotze, thank you so much for coming by. We appreciate it. Dr. Mark, uh, Matt Kotze is Vice President Medical Affairs at CHI Memorial. And this is how you can get in touch with them concerning sepsis or any other issues that you want to find out about. Go to chimemorialmedicalgroup.org, chimemorialmedicalgroup.org, and they can help out with primary care, specialty care physicians as well. Uh, they are your source. Dr. Kotze, thank you you again and we will take a quick break and have more three plus you right after this. Thank you.